Hello, everybody. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church here in Brookings, South Dakota. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and thank you for joining me. My name is Pastor Pete. This is an opportunity to pause in the middle of the week, to reflect on scripture, to pray together, to sing together, to remind ourselves that no matter how uncertain these times are, God can carry us through. And so in a moment, we're going to be looking at a psalm. We have been following a series entitled Psalms for a Pandemic. Tonight's psalm is Psalm 139. But before we get to the psalm, I'm going to invite us to pray together. Let's pray. Oh God, you are beyond description. You are like the wind in the trees. We can see you at work, but cannot grasp the size and the shape of you. We continue to see your presence in the sunrise each morning, in the rain that renews our earth, in the wind that announces the coming and the going of seasons. Thank you for carrying us through today for the new opportunities to live life and to love the people around us. As we reflect on your scriptures, breathe your Holy Spirit into these words and give us courage for life. Teach us how to hear you in this time we spend together. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you got your Bibles? Psalm 139. I was grateful to Pastor Krista for leading us last week, and she chose her favorite psalm, which inspired me to pick my favorite psalm tonight. Psalm 139. And uh, if you guys ever get to my funeral, Please make sure this is the psalm that is read. Psalm 139. I'm going to read through it. It's framed as a prayer, a conversation between the psalmist and God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day for darkness is as light with you. You formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written. Every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I'm still with you. Oh, that you'd slay the wicked, O God, O men of blood, depart from me. 
They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139. It was dark. And on this dark and dangerous night, a robber broke into a house had his torch with him and he shone his torch all around looking for some valuables to carry away when a voice in the dark said, Jesus is watching you. He nearly jumped out of his skin, shone his torch around wildly but couldn't see anything and carried on looking for some valuables when again the voice boomed out, Jesus is watching you. This time he searched a little more carefully and there in the corner was a parrot sitting in its cage. Did you say that, he said to the parrot? Yes, said the parrot, I was just trying to warn you. The burglar laughed, warn me, who are you? I am Moses, said the bird. Moses, what kind of people would name a bird Moses? Oh, the same kind of people who would name a pit bull Jesus. So today, so today I'd like to give us two things to think about. I'd like to speak about the fact that Jesus is watching us and then to invite us to watch Jesus. In fact, this is the essence of the psalm. The psalm begins with the words that Jesus is watching us. Psalm 139 verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Our Creator not only has made us and breathed life into us, but our Creator takes a keen interest in us and watches us as we go out and as we come back in, who watches us when we wake up in the morning, when we go to sleep at night, who, who lovingly, lovingly, excitedly, joyfully shares this grand adventure of life with us. The psalm says, not only is God watching us, but God has been watching over us since the moment of our conception. I pick up in verse 13. You formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows this very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book, were written every one of them the days that were formed for me when as yet there were none of them. And, and I want to s invite us to celebrate these words. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God who saw me, who saw you in your mother's womb and partnered with your mother in making you. Now, your mother might not have been perfect. But the fact is, God is. And God perfectly made you. In fact, this is central to our faith as Methodist people. It's called the doctrine of prevenient grace. A God who sees us long before we even know there is a God. The God who has seen us in our mother's womb, who has delighted over our life and has called to us long before we even gained an awareness of life and of God. 
Psalm 139 verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. The, the amazing knowledge that the God of all creation knew about me, dreamed, in, in terms of the psalm, dreamed every day of my life, planned my life, placed gifts and skills and abilities within my life before I even had life. And certainly for me, the one, the one thing that kind of cries out from the psalm is that we should never wish to be somebody else. That we ought to celebrate the way we are made. You need to celebrate your own unique skills, your own particular way of doing things. Put differently, don't wish that you had somebody else's hair. Love the hair you have or the hair you don't have. Love the body you have. Love the voice you have. Love the way you were made because God made you. This futile exercise of wishing that we looked different and sadly some people spend fortunes disagreeing with God, saying to God, I am not happy with the way you've made me. I think I can improve it. And the psalm says, God lovingly put you together and dreamed of who you could be. You are just perfect because you are exactly what God wants you to be. And I'm inviting us today to affirm this in our spirit. Reject the words of those who will try and put you down. Own the wonder of being made by God. Say it aloud. God doesn't make junk. God has... God has made well. Each one of us, precious in God's sight, made well by God. So, so celebrate it. The God who watches over us, has watched over us since our conception, watches our coming and our going, enjoys our life because God has glued us together. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. That doesn't mean there aren't moments we go off track or somehow we betray the dreams God had for us. But that doesn't stop God loving us any less. I, I might lose the dream God had for me, but God never loses that dream. God holds me. And, and, and when I'm ready to hear, God calls me back to that dream. Because I am perfectly created for God's amazing plan for my life and gift for my life. So having said, God watches me, I now want to invite us to watch God. Psalm 139 verse 17, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. How precious to me, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. In the same way that God thought about me and God crafted my life, with the psalmist I need to be, be, to be able to say, how precious, O oh Lord, are your thoughts about the people around me. As much as I'm grateful that God's at work in me, I need to discover that God's in work with the people around me. And watching God at work with people around me asks me to be res respectful of the work that God is doing. And, and even more so when the people around me are not like me. Because because so often the way we human beings are created, we are tempted to want to make other people see life the way we do. We want to make other people do things our way, make other people think our way. And yet the family of God is not about everybody speaking the same or looking the same or dressing the same 
or even understanding God the same. It is the love of God that holds us together. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. The people around me are also the works of God. And God is at work in other people's lives as much as he's at work in mine. And so the challenge in this text, to discover that God is at work in the lives of others. Let's not use insulting language in relation to the people around us. Not in public, not on Facebook, not in the privacy of our homes, not even in our own thoughts. And, and to sharpen it, I am so tired of white people thinking they can share racist remarks with me just because I have a white skin. But actually it happens to all of us. All of us have jokes that we tell. We have, we have in-jokes that reflect us versus them, whoever the us and the them are. And it happens around the world. There are us jokes about them people. But perhaps the next time, educate that person who's saying hurtful things about someone else. Perhaps you might want to say to them, you are criticizing something that God is doing. You are unhappy with the way God has made that person? Remember me saying earlier, God doesn't make junk? Well, as much as I'm not junk, other people aren't junk either. God is at work. In the midst of the way we mess things up, I mess things up, others mess things up, let's look for God at work and be able to celebrate God at work. The sad thing is, so often, I expect a higher standard of behavior from someone else than I do from myself. I found this quote. Somehow the mirrors we use to see ourselves are more flattering than the magnifying glasses we use to see others. If we can encourage the good in another person, I am convinced there will be less space for the bad. And so this psalm ends in a really healthy place. The final two verses, verses 23 and 24, I think the whole psalm leads itself to this. The recognition that I need to confess. Confess that I've not celebrated the fact that I'm made by God and confess that I haven't seen those around me as made by God. Verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's offer ourselves to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I disrespect your handiwork. Sorry that I often doubt myself instead of celebrating the amazing way you've made me. I'm sorry that I criticize others as if you've not, a hand, not had a hand in making them. Many years ago, in the 1930s, there was a missionary in New Zealand who was preaching this psalm and some of the indigenous people came to him and brought him a tune out of which he wrote a song based on the last two verses, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. And uh, I'm going to sing it. It may or may not be familiar with you. It's a Maori tune um, and literally words of scripture. But it might be a good reflection. The moment when we ask God to search our souls, to root out, root out the junk, that God's amazing goodness can be seen in who we are. So let's try this song. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior, know my thoughts. 
hearts I pray See if there be some wicked way in me Cleanse me from every sin and set me free Praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin. Fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with shame. Grant my desire to magnify Thy name. And so let's pray. Lord God, search our hearts. Grant us grace to discover that you are at work in our lives. Grant us grace to celebrate that you'd work in the lives of others. And may we discover you at work in the world around us and be able to say how amazing it is, how awesome your thoughts are, and how how wonderful your work is. Bless our homes, go with us in our town, in our country. Hold us in these difficult times that despite all that seeks to demoralize us, despite all that seeks to bring us down, we might, we might celebrate the knowledge that you've been with us since our conception and you will continue with us to eternity. So receive these prayers, which we offer in Jesus' name as we share together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so thank you for joining me. God bless you, God keep you, and God go with you. If you'd like to make a donation towards the work of this church, you will find details on the website. Now receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and may the presence of his Holy Spirit be with you today and to eternity. Amen. Good night. Thank you.